welcome back YouTube. We have Ahmed again from in-depth tech reviews. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the nearby sharing feature for Android devices. This is one of the features that Android users have been waiting for for so long. In this video, I'm gonna go through everything you need to know about the feature, starting from how to get it active on your device, what are the settings you get, how to use it, the type of content you can share, and finally, the speed of transfer. So let's take a closer look at the nearby sharing feature for Android devices. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. To activate the feature on your Android device, the process is very simple. Step number one, register yourself for the beta program of Google Play services. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. Once you click on it, you will get the same page with a button here to register yourself. And the reason you need to register for beta because the feature is not yet finalized and it's only available for beta testers. Once you finish the first step, just head over to the Google Play Store, go to My Apps and Games, and then go to the beta tab and you should see Google Play services showing now. Once you tap on it, you should get another button here called update if you are not already on the beta version. Uh, just update your Google Play services and give your phone maybe a few days or few hours until Google pushes the feature automatically to your phone. To confirm the feature is now active, you can check your notification shade by tapping the edit button and look for any icon called nearby share like in my case here, I have nearby share and put it in this area for quick access. Or you can also jump to settings and look for the nearby share feature. In my case here, I'm using Pixel 4 XL and I can go to connected devices, connection preferences, and I see here a new menu item called nearby share. Now let's take a look at the settings. And the first thing you get here is the turn on and off switch. And after that, you have the ability to choose which Google account to be associated with the feature. After that, you can set a name for your device. And next is the visibility. When it comes to visibility, there are three choices. The first one is called all contacts. And in this case, any contact with a Gmail account saved in your contact list will be able to see the device if the feature is turned on. And when you go to some contacts here, it will give you a switch beside each contact to turn it on or off and decide which ones will be able to see the device. Or you can put it on hidden. And in this case, none of your contacts will be able to see the device if it's nearby and the feature is turned on. The only confusing part here, when you go to some contacts or all contacts, you will see the full list of your contacts, even if they don't have a Gmail account saved. However, you will get a hint here at the bottom saying that 991 contacts are not available. To use nearby share with them, add their email address associated with their Google account to your contacts. Does that mean that you will not be able to share uh, information with another Android device if you don't have the Gmail account saved? Of course not. You still can do that and I'm going to show you how in the next section but let's continue with the settings for now. Also keep in mind that no one can share anything with you if the device is locked, even if you have the visibility set to all contacts and this contact is already saved in your contact list because it says here at the bottom, your device visibility controls who can share with you while your screen is unlocked, which means if your phone is locked, no one can share stuff with you anyways. And the last option here will allow you to choose how you want to transfer your stuff. And the first choice is called data, which means it will use your cellular data connection. And it says data may be used for small files, charges may apply. So I don't recommend this option if you have a small data plan. Next one is Wi-Fi only, which means a Wi-Fi direct connection, a peer-to-peer -peer connection between this phone and the other one. And the last choice, it says files will always be shared offline. But it's not clear how it will be shared offline. Is it going to use Bluetooth, NFC? It's not actually clear. But if we take a look here at the bottom, it says nearby share requires Bluetooth and location to be on. To share files, a Wi-Fi hotspot might be turned on temporarily. And it doesn't say anything about Bluetooth or NFC. So we need more clarification regarding this 
option which is called without internet. However, when we reach the speed section in this video, I'm gonna test the speed of each one to see what are the differences. Now let's take a look how the feature works. First of all, I have here my Pixel 3 XL on the right and the Pixel 4 XL on the left. Both of them has that feature available. And if we're gonna go to settings, it's turned on on both. Here I'm using my personal email and here I'm using the channel email. And the visibility here is set to all contacts, same as the Pixel 3 XL. And in this case, I have my personal email, which is used on the Pixel 4 XL, saved on the Pixel 3 XL, and also the other way around. So both of them are visible to each other. And when I try to send a photo, let's say from my Pixel 3 XL to the Pixel 4, tap on the share icon, tap on nearby sharing. Now my Pixel 4 XL should appear here without me doing anything. All I need to do is to have the feature turned on and my visibility to all contacts or to whatever number of contacts I want. And once I tap on the other phone, I will get this notification either to accept or decline. So I'm gonna tap on accept and it will immediately open the photo after finishing the transfer process. But what if you don't have the Gmail account of the person you are trying to share your content with? In this case, you just need to pull down your notification shade, tap on the nearby share tile, wait few seconds. And once you have this screen active on your device, that means that this device is visible regardless if you have the Gmail account of this person or not, you will be able to share your content with that person and it will appear exactly the same way I showed you earlier. Just tap on it and the other person will accept or decline and the same process will apply. And if you want to get back to the information that you received from the other device, you need to go to the downloads folder or the download folder. And as you see, here is the, the image I've just sent to myself from the Pixel 3 XL showing up here. And that applies also to files. If you transferred any files from this device to this device or the other way around, they will appear under the download folder. And if you wonder what type of content you can share using this feature, you can share pretty much everything. You can share photos, videos, links, uh, even text. So if you want to copy text from this phone to the other phone, just select the text you want, tap on share, be ready on the other device, tap on nearby. Once it appears, accept it. And then you will get a button here called the copy. Once you do that, you can paste it wherever you want. Now let's move on to the final part of this video, which is the speed test. And in this section, I will use a specific file and I will keep sending it over using each and every data transfer option. We have data, we have Wi-Fi only or without internet to understand what are the differences in speed. Now, as you see, both devices are ready and I have here both of them set to the Wi-Fi only option. And I'm going to transfer a file from my Pixel 4XL, which is a video, and it has 404 megabytes in size. So let's see how that will work. And I'm going to make my Pixel 3XL ready to receive nearby. And I'm going to choose actual size. But after choosing actual size, it's actually 385.3 megabytes. It's no longer showing 404. So I'm going to go for this and the phone appeared and I'm going to start the stopwatch now. Now, as you see, the transfer took one minute and 13 seconds to transfer a file, which is 386 megabytes. Now let's try the same thing using the other option, which is data. So I'm gonna set data here and also on the Pixel 4 XL and do the same test again.
And when it comes to the data option, it took around one minute and 18 seconds or 19 seconds until I just pushed the pause button. And one more time, we will do it with the offline option on both devices without internet on both. And finally, the offline option took 1 minute and 31 seconds, which is the slowest across all of them. So the best option here is the Wi-Fi only. So that's pretty much it for today. That was my video about the nearby sharing feature for Android devices. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if you know more information about the feature. And I hope you like my video. And if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.